is ain't anybody got experience with the Mississippi River at 49 feet. She's never been there before in history, so how could you know what she's going to do? I think that this was a, a storybook example of how the Civil Corps and the military side and, and most importantly the, the local folks and the farmers down there can all come together. Just a storybook example. It's, yeah. Uh, Looking serious. Was, okay, around the 4th of July probably we started on the dirt. Oh, it's been, oh, we've been bagging here for over two weeks, Bill. Yeah, three. I'd say we've been bagging here for three weeks. Well, how long have you been bagging in town? That long. Well, yeah, we've been here just, just as long. long. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. After that uh, April flood, whenever we held out 37-7, I told us that we were lucky because if we'd have got another couple of feet, I wasn't sure we could hold it out. But when this flood started coming, they told us it was going to be about 40 feet. And we got to looking at the thing a little bit and decided, well, we worked pretty hard. We think we can hold out 40 feet. Then it got to 41 and 42, and we just kept working and never quit. We had kind of got into, you had a tiger by the tail, and you just couldn't let go. But uh, if we'd have known then we was going to be at 47 and 48, We'd have thrown up our arms and probably ran. Of course, when we got to 49 and a safe point 67, it was, uh, you know, I always said it's like putting six gallons of water in a five-gallon bucket. It's hard to do. It's hard to handle it. But we, we give her our best shot. Early on, uh, the Farmers Levy District were, were trying to protect their area at 40 and 42 feet. We thought we could even accomplish that. But before we fought here, we fought down the bottom first. This was our second project. Oh. We fought out there till we lost that. See, we fought out there till we lost all our crops. Well, basically, <coughs> the farmers got three levees. They've lost the one probably three or four weeks ago. Uh, from Dodge Creek to, to Pujaw, hooking on the, the western part of Caskey. Now, a week or so after that, they lost about half of their, uh, the, the north, what they call the north levee, really the north to east levee, takes off uh, from Caskey uh, about four, three miles or four miles from where Dodge Creek hooks on to Caskey about four miles east of that Dodge Creek, uh, the North Levee uh, leaves Caskey and, and runs six miles long to the marina. That six miles, uh, they, they, they fought and, and are still fighting to hold the upper half of that. And they've got about three or, or three to four miles of that levee that they still have, uh, the river hasn't topped. And uh, that what it amounts to is the, the river's topped it at the lower portion of that levee, and, and it's further downstream. So when it water backs up to the to the Valley Spring levee, which is their third levee, then it's 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 a downstream reading. So it's uh, the difference in the uh, in the water depth from the headwater above the Marina Road at at Valley Spring levee and the backwater on the lower side of Marina Road at Valley Spring Levee is about three and a half feet. And, and uh, the, uh, uh, that's the difference in the backwater and the headwater. So as long as they maintain that three and a half miles along the uh, uh, north levee, uh, uh, Valley Spring Levee will be high enough and we can hold it out in the south southern part of town.
had already had uh, three civilians set up in the north, south, and central area to work as a coordinator. The Army National Guard uh, came in and with their uh, mission was to support the civilian authority. Real good results with the Guard. Them people are just as courteous, just as nice. And, uh, you tell them what your needs were, and they were right there to take and fulfill them. So. until we know that we've got rock again in the bags and again in the lower surface there so we don't have no eddies eating out underneath. Nothing is 
There's <laughs> nothing excessive, uh, like a small creek in one place, but we can handle that. Like you can hold a canoe on it. That's right. <laughs> so what's new? In these particular areas that you see here in the north, uh, we have basically some uh, smaller levee protection and basically private uh, private protection that was joined together by neighbors and such. <coughs> and uh, areas that were joined by the city using city streets and, and things of that nature and uh, ran from about 4th Street here up into the division and Sigma Street areas up into here. I tell you, if it wasn't for those inmates, those guys flat and get a bunch done. You're going to save this Take town. A little, a little pride in the work here, That's huh? right. We're yeah. going to help save this safe. town. Yeah. We're going to put that dike up right. So far, this is the only one that hasn't been breached by the water. So we're going to save this historic right. community. That would have been uh, just a few years then after the 73 yeah. flood, huh? Yeah, we moved here in 77, I think it was. Had they talked about it getting into the house in 73? Yeah, they said it didn't. Yeah. There was one house. Well, see, back then all the neighbors got together. They made one big levee all the way around. All the neighbors just kept connecting, and that saved it. It really did. One of the vital things, or two of them, is the fact that Mississippi Lime they're so generous with their equipment and their materials, and the entire rock has the capabilities of producing it faster than we're hauling it off. Well, it's, the fill material is a waste product from uh, Mississippi Lime. It's a chat. It's a byproduct of the crushing. Whenever they crush the stone for kiln feed at Mississippi Lime, uh -huh. from people would ask if this stuff will burn you because they mistake this for lime, but it isn't. It's limestone. It's a calcium carbonate rock. Why can't they mine this stuff in bags already? They could save a step. They'll be mining that levee out someday, about a thousand years down the road. <laughs> Get that good high calcium. They, uh, they routed uh, from out of Tower Rock uh, by Industrial Road uh, going around the central part of town and the south end of town. And then, of course, uh, I call it Fourth Street or White Sand Road uh, getting back into the north end of town. Barge, uh, we barged uh, down to uh, the marina and then the, the farm field, and there's been over a quarter of a million ton barge. Uh, a lot of times, uh, there was in a neighborhood, I guess, of uh, probably close to 3,000 ton an hour going out of here, up to up to 20 hours a day that way, or 18 hours at least going out that way. About the 19th or 20th, we were every time when you walk up on the levee, the water was level with your eyeballs. And, and uh, you couldn't get no rest. You could, there would be a hundred things you could think of needed to be done. From third, they're over there behind the old John Deere building.
the National Guard wouldn't have come in, I don't think we could have played the outside out. We called in some of the guys that have been up all night, um, had them put in an extra two hours. Most of us put in at least 12 hours, 12 to 12 or more hours anyway. And in here, try to get a cross arm between them other two cross arms, both pole just move that phase over there around. I don't know how much of this person can take, you know, I mean, them, them levees are so soaked, you know, they could go any time. These people are getting wore out. do too much then you feel like you're expect you don't want to expect the worst you don't want to necessarily build up for the absolute worst you want to be a little optimistic and yet you have to shore up leave here at 3 in the morning and I sleep for 4 or 5 hours and come back about 10 o'clock. You got yeah. six of the finest operators in this and I mean when the guard come in here and just their mouths drop on, they don't believe what those guys can get done in a matter of Is 10 right? minutes. About the 20th did I feel certain that we could, I felt that we could uh, win. Uh, and I think about then we were still talking 30, uh, I'm sorry, 45 feet or, or thereabouts. Comes this morning and things are looking real good. Uh, uh, the court tells us that we probably should experience our crest, if you want to call it a crest, sometime p.m. today, sometime probably this evening. Uh, Crest will, will get here and probably hang around for several hours before you see any decrease. You'll see tenths of an inch go up and down either way. Let's go into the shelter report. Uh, Kathy? We haven't heard from any additional people who are wanting to come into the shelter. And out to the outslides. And we're going to continue feeding at the Legion Hall and the VFW Hall. <laughs> dressing and liver dumplings and kettle beef and green beans and all sorts of salads and Juanita and I have just been slaving away so hard. We have so just hard. been working all day. I've been washing dishes all day. The, everybody has a job just because they're not all down there sandbagging doesn't mean they're not doing something. So we got spaghetti, we 
we've got lasagna, we've got beans and beans and hot dogs, and potatoes, tomatoes, all kinds of salads. People, we have to we have to be concerned about this thing uh, considerably. Yet uh, we've got people calling in because they think the crest has already come out. They're ready to move back in. <laughs> Mickey might explain that is if they wait a week and a half, it may be as low as the 1973 high was. And at 11:30, I called it 46.89. So we think we had to crash somewhere around 9, 9:30. But that gauge will fluctuate sometimes. So I'm hoping that's right. I'm kind of concurring with him. We're we're hoping, and from what I talked to Corey, man, we think it's maybe done its thing. That'd be great. That'd be great. But the weather prediction doesn't look good. <laughs> Weather prediction doesn't look good, does it? We got tested and with that local rain of four or five inches, and that was that was a. Uh, I went into City Hall after I've seen the problems and the upper creeks, and I told them, and we'll win it or lose it in the next hour.
I just got it all fixed up. That's what you get. We had it all fixed up. New garage. Got a half a new roof. He had to quit on it. The flood was getting there. This side's the new. That way he's got to finish that. You see that line under that window? Yeah. That's when that buster there come back in or just fill this up. Or that's like flood. It's a mess. I don't know when it's ever going to go down. Comes up, goes down. Comes up, goes down. But then the next thing nature really did was uh, uh, that we had a south wind at okay. Valley Spring. We had waves three feet high. They topped the levee. They washed across it. They washed a lot of debris and stuff on the levee. And uh, we just about lost it there. We made it just sandbag the whole thing from one end to the other. It's about a mile. You better get some experienced drivers, make sure there isn't anybody out in the pickup or anything, because I've talked to a few guys and they only made one trip, they were scared to death. Uh, we came through then with sandbaggers, and, uh, and we put two sandbags wide, one up the face of the levee and one kind of at the water. And we did the length of that levee tonight, that night, and uh, and uh, we held on to that. And the next day we went in there with trucks again, and and bulk material, and we reclaimed the the three to five feet of edge of levee that we lost. Three weeks ago, if we were told it was going to go to 49 feet, I don't, I don't think we'd be here fighting. I think we'd have grabbed everything to, that could be grabbed and, and headed for high ground. This is a, this is a serious enough uh, uh, situation with the water getting up to 49 feet. Uh, I got a call from Mississippi Lime from Margaret Jenks, the owner of Mississippi Lime, just for the meeting and. She's prepared to put her plant on a holiday type schedule uh, that uh, could possibly release some of the workforce out there to come in and, and get some of this done also. Starting this afternoon and tonight, we're going to need a, a, another big, big push on sandbags at both uh, the Valley Desert and the VFW. Sure, we are ready. And everybody else said yes, we are ready. So we wrote a proposal. We are going on a on a field trip. Uh, this is the first time I have been a field trip in. Oh, Hopper Bluff, Missouri. Uh, come up here for the day. Yes. No, the free came brought a bus load up for the day. We got to watch the news and feeling guilty. Uh, we, we didn't work today, so we come up here. Uh, we, like it's starting to get a little spooky because you're seeing uh, that areas that that were sandbagged up a couple of feet now, those sandbags are underwater. And like I said, it makes you wonder whether we can keep up with it, but it gives you the momentum to keep working. So 
far. I mean, they, they've gotten their levees up before the river came. What they're worried about now is how long the river will stay there. How's it going, Tim? Pretty good. You want to look at this old house down here? We're just discussing what we're going to do with it. Uh, off the now yeah, it's getting this high and we get a couple more foot of water on there. If you use a machine at the Valley Spring, will you need another machine to offload barges? Well, they're going to load barges? They're going to load some barges here.
Terry's got a little spot he's worried about. I think he's seen some movement that scared him, so we're going to check that out. The creek on the north side, we're, I, I'd say we're, we're holding back 25 foot of water. Well, let's see what you got, Gary. Far enough maybe to plug up some of them, some of them leaks. I sure will. Every once in a while you notice a little bit of something down in there. Looks like possibly some bubbles coming up. Yeah, that spot there, we want to watch it. It might be clearing up a little bit more now than it was a while ago, but yeah, it is. they'll it appear like dirty. But uh, that's just uh, some, a leak coming in higher and it's coming through the gravel and it brings a little bit of the silt off the rock. And they show dirty at first, but if you're watching for an hour or two, they began to clear up. Down. And I think that will clear up. We'll work on this for the guard. We'll work on this tonight. I think when there's not so much traffic here. We have encountered some sand boils behind the rainy road. And uh, as you're aware of, Kemp, we're going to have to keep an eye on that. We're going to have to monitor. Uh, we need to get some flags so we can flag these areas. That's right. Do we have some flags up here yet? I'm going to try to assign where some flags are here. I'm going to try to assign somebody to walk that area, uh, patrol that area. It's pretty constant now. Keep an eye on it. He's got, uh, he's got about a dozen flags out there. He said there's a gopher hole. That's where we got a boil. See, we had a fan boil out here today, and what they did is uh, put a pipe over the top of it to, uh, to let it come up in there and kind of equalize the pressure on it. Uh -huh. Hey, Emerald! Yeah. Sorry, they ain't throwing that water back right now. It's getting soggy, and it's bad. It's real soft in here. Water all through here. But I ain't good at all in this boat. Is it coming up or is it just me? It's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up, it's coming up big time. What? See, that's right at the top of the sandbags there. Yeah. Yes. And it's with, and there's current. There's all there's a ton of current out there. This is serious right here. Serious, he's right. One thing will really help if you put her on this side and lean that road this way. We do it all the time. Just bring her, you know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. Yeah, he just bring her up from here, tethered out to that end there. Just lean a little bit and, and they'll go. What he was trying to do, he was trying to get the points across to the girls. He says, How can you save it in this a levee down here when they're all collapsing? And I, it made you feel real good to, to know that I'm, how many levees are still holding? Now, we're one of the few, so mm -hmm. but how can you make that girl believe this? And I said, Well, I said, Take her up to some of the high schools and show her every state championship we've won in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I said, There's about a dozen of them for volleyball, footballs, and all the other things. And I said, uh, 
then just show her that church stuff. And I said, because what are we, you know, and I mean people are church goers around here. And I said, when I collected second baskets at, at church for the flood, I couldn't believe the dollar. First Baptist Church is meeting in the R. W. Thomas Library at the public school because of the because of the high water. And uh, if you don't know it already today, sandbaggers are urgently needed. Uh, and I want to encourage you to do that. Let's have prayer uh, for our town today. Father, we approach your throne of grace today in the name of your Son Jesus Christ. And we believe, Father, the promise of your word that says we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his plan and his purpose. If we can persevere in speaking a blessing through all of this, then we will come away both wounded and blessed. And we can avoid neither one so we continue through the night wrestling and ready to be wounded. But we will also, in many mysterious ways, I believe, also find blessings. I, I, I felt that Mick uh, uh, looked at that girl and she was starting to understand that people got faith in her. You know, mm -hmm. I, think that's what, I think that was what Mick was trying to get across. The 61 block, is it on the left or right? The left. Roger. What do you think? It might be worse than what you want to look at. That's quicker. Sandbags might be quicker, don't you think? Sandbags would be the quickest. Well, I don't like this at all. Better get some bags here quick. You better not worry about that down there. We can't wait right now. We need bags now. If we can get it, just you got a five quarter around here, start throwing some bags in it. Burns on his way. We're gonna put some in a pickup and get him over here. All right, we're on way. Out here. what you and I want to go as soon as they got a loader coming across there. Yeah. As soon as this loader and this gun truck come off, you go. Okay. I don't think this is an immediate danger, but it needs to be fixed. I think we ought to give it a priority. Right after this is done. Well, they got these red flags. That's what we've been putting where we have balls for the red flag and this 
would scared us right away when it was a little bit muddy. I started changing the colors. It went from from cloudy to like chocolate milk and then it was like chocolate milk shake. And in 10 minutes it was that big around and in 15 minutes it was it, it, I'd throw a bag in it it'd come right out the other end. I mean it just shot it out of there like a cannon and I looked up and Leroy Melfeld's truck was doing like this. There was about six of us down and I said guys we got to get out of here because it's gone. It's all over. It's about to it's about the same thing that happened on Caskey, Bowes, Burley Bottom. It's the same thing. We wasn't worried about the height. I said that this morning. We're not worried so much about the height. We can see that. We can keep ahead of that. But it's impossible to uh, find all these weak places underneath. It's just impossible. Sure is a letdown feeling whenever you whenever you fail. She's eating.
Jay's shop going on. Up there, guys. Take a swim before it goes under. Jump in. Won't be long. Gonna be a good way to clean off. Tell him I'm swimming. That's why they call him Mikey. How come you guys are all standing over there watching? This is wonderful. That's good. <laughs> Still got to maintain this levee out here because if we lose this here, we're going to get another three foot of water back here. I start on this on the 3rd of July. I'm not done yet. After seeing that thing yesterday, we, we're in the process of looking at the, the legal means to force people from their residences. This morning sometime we'll, we'll clarify that and by noon I would hope to have some sort of order out. Anybody in those areas, they're going to have to go out. You better start warning them now. We're going to be looking at how to lock down the area as far as traffic control. Uh, we've got MPs here with us to help us uh, in regards with the police force and we're going to probably be putting some one-way signs up one way in and one way out uh, and then we're going to patrol the interiors of these areas. Any other uh, see any other way of way around it? We do need our. 
levee walkers and stuff in there. We do need you guys to be in and out of there to be keeping an eye on things. We don't need anybody else in there. Or there ain't no if you want to anymore. We need to start talking to our people and saying, hey, start start getting it out. Anybody got any questions on that? Anybody disagree with that? Okay. I used to call over our Perry Rocher office and they feel that base and bottom is about 60 to 70 percent full. They're back flooding in by the four charters. They got about a six foot wall of water in there. If it's still filling and it fills all day, we probably won't get no more rides. I think we may have had a crib. A little anticlimactic <laughs> after a whole month of working on this thing, but I. It don't make you mad, though. It sure don't make me mad, no. <laughs> About 47 6 is what it got back up in here, huh? Oh, I thought it was a bit hotter. Your residue, isn't that your 47 mark? The river did drop, didn't it? Last night, 6 oh. inches or better? It's so far, as long as it'll come back. Three o'clock in the morning, uh, I heard them down here, and my wife started to get up. And I said, "There's no use getting up. I see they're down there because I can see the flashlight." All of a sudden, Dan come running in. He grabbed me by one arm and he laid by the other, and he said, "Get out of here as fast as you can." And 
and my grandson just missed it by a few minutes. He was headed down there to turn on the gas pump, and he heard it starting to go. So he came in just running to get us. Well, the noise was so terrific. The noise was terrific. And uh, even the rugs in the living room, they were waves like this from, uh, I guess, the pressure of the water shoving the pressure up on the floor. My goodness. Why, well, this year has been destructive. Oh, man. And we had a great big pump right here, right down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can't find it.
core that this came from John and Mel and the guys. Um, they feel that we may have crested uh, last or this morning at 2 p.m. at 49.53. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. What did you say it was? 49.53. That's a Chester, right? We had discussed that should be their last third. I think so. Actually, that, that almost has to be the last third. You have your guarantee on that? Well, I it's think I'll put my stamp on it. <laughs>
anyone told you folks that we had a crest yesterday? Oh, praise the Lord! Are they sure? It was the same at 7 o'clock this morning as it is right now. I haven't found no change. Some guys sat down at the water plant, they haven't either. So, uh, And the, the part that I keep reminding people is that if it stays around for a day or two and drops as much as six inches a day, which is more than it's going to drop, it's going to be two weeks till we get to the record flood of 73 level. So that means we're going to have a lot of water a long time. Is the river going down now? Yeah, it's gone down a level. Yesterday it was over that road. Yeah, that is good. What's, what is it going to be like when once the water go down? You know, I mean, once this water go down, it's going to be a lot of mud. You know, and all these houses are going to be, like, um, totaled out, like, you know. not just most people. What has to come out between the houses, I take that and I line it up the creek so we can protect this north end from flash flooding. I think we just put our heads together and figure out where we want to go and do it. I came into town and, and I guess I didn't know quite what to expect, but the first house that I walked into, we were cleaning a basement and I walked down and I saw a man's shoe and a little play ball and from that moment on all I did all day was push sludge and cry. I'm Clothing, I mean he had army memorabilia, he had trophies. It was like memories, and accomplishments, parts of his life and it was all in a trash dumpster. I guess I've been fortunate or I've never really had to fight a fire too much or hurricane or an earthquake. So it seems like everybody's got something in their life that they got to fight and uh, to make it through. So. Um, one of the news people was interviewing me and they said, you're way too happy. You know, this is a disaster. Your house is over there falling in. It's like, well, what are you going to cry about? Don't do any good to cry. They'll come out of it. They're, they're good people out here and they're they're proud people, and they're willing to help themselves, and that's the people we like to help, those who are willing to help themselves, whether they can or not. You can't hardly thank them personally, but I'd sure like to. I said, you can thank CNN for me being out here. Maybe what this is all about is bringing people together, uh, neighbors, helping neighbors, uh, family coming together, basically a coming together of people, and... Uh, you know, if anything, that's good that's come out of it. Uh, you know, people finding out how deep they go in their heart. And from what I've seen around here, people are going pretty deep in their heart. I, 
I think this is the Lord's way of working to bring people close to, that they help one another and have love and respect for one another. I pray continually. And like I say, if it wouldn't be for my faith, I just, I just wouldn't have, I don't think I would have lasted this long. Well, everybody's been working together on this. Well, I tell you, if it wasn't, this town would be gone. It'd be history right now. It'd be in the history, because I'd be into it. And uh, some of these people, you know, can say, well, we helped fight the great flood of 93. Uh -huh. He said, what are you going to do when this flood's over? I said, I'm going to break a bottle of champagne on the levee. He said, I'll bring you that. I'll bring you that bottle. <laughs> No, I just think it's a good plan to try to encourage as many people from out of town to come here to do the work for us as possible. I noticed and that. that way the natives are free to go around and video and things like that. Um, <laughs> we'll have to use that one. <laughs>